Make him rage quit, exit out the door. Yeah. Use his favorite team with a Baltimore. Huh? Don't get mad. Huh? It's just what it is. So YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, we are here to talk about another PFF list where it ranks the top head coaches in the league heading into the 2021 season. Because we talk about quarterbacks and running backs and receivers and offensive line, all, all that good stuff. We talk about all that. But we don't talk about the head coaches enough. Now, I know, team, keep it clean. Y'all always talk about the head coaches because, y'all, boy, y'all don't miss a beat. But it's not talked about enough overall with everybody. So let's get into this list. But right before we get into it, please tell somebody you love them today. Tell somebody you ain't talked to in a while, you ain't heard from, they ain't heard from you. Just reach out to them and say, hey, what's up? I was just thinking about you. That's it. It ain't got to be no big deal. It ain't got to be, it ain't got to be nothing over the top. I was just thinking about you. That's it. And trust me, that, that, it, it makes a big difference. Because it makes a big difference when you send it out, but it definitely makes a big difference when you get that message. So give that to somebody today. Anyway, this list... The way that they make this list, let's just read. It says, with the 2021 NFL draft and free agency now well in the rearview mirror, OTAs and minicamp are giving us some much needed clips of our favorite players in action. Well, those are over as well. Uh, in preparation for the 2021 NFL season, PFF has ranked the numerous position groups, posted simulation results for the campaign, and discussed enticing bets. We don't care about the betting part. Skip that. Uh, head coaches are generally out of the spotlight until week one hits. But let's bring them into the fold. In ranking the top head coaches uh, heading into the 2021 season below, the criteria were quantitative. But unlike with offensive and defensive play callers, they were not folded into one all-encompassing rating system for betting or fantasy the way each side of the ball is. The reasons for this are the relatively uh, stochastic nature of fourth down decisions, close games, and other small sample events. Okay, so they got to, they got to, what that's saying is they got to take a different approach because the way you grade an offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, or like they talked about with the players, it's, it, you can't just grade a head coach by that because a head coach has everything to do with all of that because they, the, the the players excelling, the, the offense and defensive coordinators excelling, though they're a product of the head coach enough times. But they're graded differently. Anyway, it says, nonetheless, a coach's ability to get more wins out of his team than wins above replacement of their roster, their ability to win games by multiple scores, <laughs> as well as lose relatively few games by multiple scores. <laughs> well, it sounds kind of familiar. Anyway, uh, and fourth down decisions all factored into these rankings. So let's get into it. Number one, Andy Reid. And I don't think anybody can deny that Andy Reid would be the number one coach on this list. Why? Because like I always say, they should have really been to the last three Super Bowls. If we're going to be honest about it, they should have been to the last three. But they went to the last two. Yeah, they lost the, the last one, obviously. But they went. They went. They made it to where... The 32 other teams want to make it. Well, actually, 31. Uh, but they made it to where every, every team wants to make it. Yeah, they didn't finish the job, but they made it to the dance. So he is obviously doing something right over there with the Kansas City Chiefs. So let's read the breakdown of him. We're not going to read every breakdown, just a few. It says, prior to Super Bowl 54 in 2019, I wrote about how Andy Reid was the best head coach in football. Since then, he went on to win his first title, navigated a pandemic offseason, helped his team to a 14-2 record during the 2020 regular season, won a playoff game with his backup quarterback playing in the second half, and reached the third Super Bowl of his career. Oh, yeah, he did the one for the Eagles where they lost to the Patriots. Oh, man, so he's lost to, to Tom Brady twice in the Super Bowl. Wow. I, I just realized that. Anyway, well, I mean, everybody lost to Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. But anyway, uh, Andy Reid's Chiefs have never gone under their market season win total. And they are, again, the Super Bowl favorites going into the 2021 regular season. Hopefully, it doesn't end up being them in the Super Bowl again. But anyway, uh, Reid is now the standard by which the rest of the league is evaluated. That's true. Now he has thoroughly outwitted. He was he was thoroughly outwitted in Tampa Bay by Todd Bowles in Super Bowl Fifty Five last season, as the debts associated with playing much of the season with a banged up offensive line and failing to develop a third option behind Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill came due. 
Sounds kind of familiar. Anyway, but that loss represented the first time the Chiefs fell by multiple scores since 2017 and the first time they failed to score a touchdown since 2014. Wow. Uh, Long derided as a coach who struggled in the two and four minute offenses. That's true. A lot of people get on Andy Reid with his time. Uh, and the one and one who was better at winning blowouts than close games. Reid propelled his Chiefs to a 91 record in one score games in 2020. Well, that's really good. Including winning the last seven uh, games of the regular season by one score, not counting week 17 game of backups. With the rebuilt offensive line and Steve Spignolo back to run the defense, look for the Chiefs to flirt with the 12 and a half wins they are projected to receive by the market this fall. So, Andy Reid, number one. Just to, just to sum all that up, Andy Reid, head honcho, number one. No problem here. I get it. I get it. I, there's no argument with him being at the top. Anyway, number two, we ain't had to wait long to get to John Harbaugh. Number two, head coach, number two head coach in the league, John Harbaugh for the Baltimore Ravens. Let's see why. They said Harbaugh is the second most tenured coach in the NFL, I think behind Bill Belichick. And he will forever have a place in lists like these after getting a team quarterbacked by Joe Flacco across the finish line in 2012. Ooh, them boys, they took a shot at Flacco. It, that, that, they, they took a shot at Flack. <laughs> they, they, they sure did, man. So let, let, let's read that again. Uh, he will forever have a place in lists like these after getting a team quarterback by Joe Flacco across the finish line in 2012. Uh, what is most impressive about Harbaugh is how much he's adapted to the needs of the NFL circa 2021. Whether it's by building defenses from back to front, adapting his team to suit the needs of a once-in-a-generation talent at the quarterback position, or listening to the math on fourth-down decision-making, <laughs> some analytics. Uh, he went for it 64% of the time when he should have in 2020. Oh, they, oh, they, have, they even have a breakdown of when you should go for it. Uh, anyway, um, am amongst the league's highest rates, Harbaugh is one of the best coaches in the league currently and has a Hall of Fame case to make. He does. He does. Um, he's only had one losing season, technically. Uh, now, there were some seasons where the Ravens felt like losers, um, because, I mean, they were like, what, nine and seven, eight and eight. And cause like the whole losing season thing, it is technically true. Like, oh yeah, this coach never had a losing season. This coach never had a losing season, but it'll be, it'll be coaches that got these records where it's like they, they went 500. So yeah, you didn't have a losing season, but you ain't have a winning season either. But with Harbaugh overall, um, his resume, it's a nice little resume. It's a nice resume. We waiting for that, uh, that chip. Hosts, Ray Lewis, Airy, we waiting for it still. This, if they want to do it this year, hey, no problem. Do your thing, do your thing. Um, but one thing about Harbaugh, uh, that you whether no matter what side of the fence you are on about Harbaugh, because I know some people love Harbaugh, some people don't like Harbaugh, some people think Harbaugh is overrated, some people think Harbaugh is underappreciated. It all depends on who you're talking to. But one thing about John Harbaugh that you can never say is that uh, his teams, they don't play for him. You can't say that. You, you, you can never say that. Whatever team he has, whoever the players are, whoever the personnel is, they play hard for him. They really do. And th the reason I, uh, th the biggest season, I know y'all remember, 2015. That, that season, that lets, it lets it be known. Like, yeah, these dudes play hard for John Harbaugh. These guys, like everybody, man, everybody, every single at every single position, starters got hurt at the at every single position that season. Literally every single position, I think maybe except fullback. Every single position, Flacco's out, Justin Forsett broke his arm. He had offensive linemen out, defensive linemen, linebackers, cornerbacks, everything, everybody. They went five and eleven. Yes, they did. Ugly record, losing record. But again, that's sort of an asterisk because everybody was out. But these guys only lost two games the entire season by more than one score. Two. two. They lost two games the entire season by more than one score. Only two. For a team banged up, beat up, bruised up, injured up to, to do that. Like, they're supposed to be getting blown out every week. Every week. It's supposed to be getting blown out, but they didn't. Them boys fought, man. They fought. And, yes, we, we do have some questions about some in-game adjustments uh, under Coach Harbaugh. 
uh, some plan B's and C's that when plan A isn't working. We do have some questions. Every, every head coach has their question marks, and those are hardballs for me at least. But overall, he has had a very, very successful career. And he's definitely way more on the winning side than he has been on the losing side. And, and you can't deny that. So Harbaugh and company, they are in a good position again this year to continue that. To, to continue it. Now, Harbaugh, uh, this list might have looked a little bit different uh, if they would have stuck with the quarterback who they took a shot at uh, in that opening paragraph. If they would have stuck with him in 2018... Uh, things could have looked a lot different. And and Harbaugh's name might have still been on here, but it would have been for a different team. Had they stuck with Joe Flacco in 2018 instead of pulling the plug? And you know they wanted to pull the plug because, I mean, they drafted Lamar in the first round. They drafted him. And, and then on top of that, um, they just... I forgot who pointed it out to me, but when they did, I was like, oh, wow, that's true. They were doing everything that they possibly could to get Lamar out there on the field. Every week, they were coming out there, running these silly plays and some obvious plays. Sometimes they worked, sometimes they didn't. But And that's when they were, they, all right, Flacco could be moving down the field. And they'd be like, oh, wait, 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 Flack. All right, hey, Lamar, <laughs> come here. Come here. Flack, you go line up at wide receiver. I don't care what you do. It don't matter what you do. Just line up at wide receiver. At least, like, get in the wide receiver stance. If you move, okay, whatever, ain't no big deal. But get in the wide receiver stance. Lamar, go out there. Show your stuff, baby. <laughs> Ah. And they would do that every single week Until all of a sudden Flacco has this injury This hip injury When he gets hit in, in the Steelers game uh, By I think uh, Stephon Tewitt And now all of a sudden It's like oh Harbaugh is probably like oh man Flacco's hurt Now we gotta go with Lamar Jackson Oh wait a minute I gotta look sad though man. Flacco's hurt though Lamar Jackson's our starting QB Okay let me not smile too much because you know, that this, this was it for Harbaugh. This was it. Everything was riding on Lamar Jackson. And what happened? He rolled Lamar Jackson to another contract extension for Harbaugh. He rolled Lamar Jackson to all these winning seasons. But now it's time to, it's time to keep on going, man. So he is riding with Lamar Jackson. And, and he, he got to have Lamar Jackson's back. Because Lamar Jackson saved his back from falling in some deep, dark... Uh, Fired head coaching waters. Now, he, again, I know, we all know that if Harbaugh would have got fired, that he would have had a job uh, like that. But still, Lamar Jackson saved his job and allowed him to remain with the Ravens. So it, it's worked out. So hopefully, um, hopefully it can t be taken to another level this year. So shout out to Harbaugh for being number two. Uh, now, number three, we're not going to read the breakdowns uh, for the remaining coaches on this list, um, but we'll go over them. Number three, Matt LaFleur from the Green Bay Packers. Um, and I think uh, one of the reasons that he is ranked so high is because he's only been a head coach for two years. Now, he does have one of the best quarterbacks in the league, for sure. But still, hey, you still got to get it done. Whether you got the greatest quarterback in the league, whether you got the worst quarterback, you still got to get it done. So you, you can't blame somebody for their situation. And it's unfortunate when people do that, when they, oh, well, this guy only did this because he got this. Oh, this guy only got this. No, you can't blame him for his situation. He walked into a good situation. He took advantage of it. Okay, good for him. So Matt LaFleur is number three. And I think the reason why he's number three is because he doesn't have the hardware yet. He doesn't have that experience. And uh, who knows what's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers. But I think since he doesn't have that Super Bowl experience, he doesn't have the Super Bowl ring. He's been close, but... Just kind of came up short. Both the past two years. Wow. So I, I think that's the reason. But he definitely coaches his team to some great wins, great regular season so far. Um, but just when it matters the most, that's when they end up falling short, unfortunately. Um, and then next up, Sean McDermott from the Buffalo Bills. Same thing. The Buffalo Bills right now, all they do is win, win, win no matter what. They a tough team. They they build a nice little roster, uh, especially last year. And then, again, this year they're looking good, too. Uh, you know the Bills are going to be in it. And, but I think it's the same thing with him. Same thing with him. Young quarterback. Well, different situation, but young quarterback. Getting ready to get paid. Josh Allen getting ready to make some money now. Josh Allen is nice, man. He is nice. 
Don't let anybody arguing back and forth about Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson fool you. Josh Allen is nice. I know some Ravens fans, they go back and forth with Bills fans. They're like, oh, why, oh, oh, why, for what? Both quarterbacks be doing their thing, man. And both of them <laughs> get paid a lot of money. But it's the same scenario, man. I think with Sean McDermott, no Super Bowl. All right, you ranked high now, heading into this season. But can you get that job done? Do, do we trust you as a head coach to get your team to the Super Bowl? Anything's possible, of course. Um, so, yeah, he's number four. Number five, Sean Payton. Now, Sean Payton does have some Super Bowl experience. Uh, but recently, the teams, um, the Saints, they've been, they've been playoff. They've been in the playoffs. Uh, but, man, they have been going through some heartbreak in the playoffs. Like last year, I think, well, they, didn't they end up getting whooped? They won the first game against the Bears, I believe. Was it the Bears? I think it was the Bears. And then the, the second game, they got blown out by, uh, was it the Bucks? Did they play the Bucks three times last year? I think they did. Um, but anyway, uh, they've been going through some heartbreakers. But now you head into this season. Yeah, you're still a good coach. But now we've seen you in sample sizes here and there without life without Drew Brees. We've seen it in little bits and pieces, but we haven't seen it for the entirety of a season. We've seen it for five games with Teddy Bridgewater. He went 5-0. and We've seen a little Jameis Winston here and there. We've seen T Taysom Hill here. But now, that's it. Now you're rolling with Jameis Winston because you know they're they not going to start no Taysom Hill. But now you're about to roll with Jameis Winston. How good are is this team really going to be now? So Sean Payton is definitely about to get tested. Um, Bill Belichick. Whoa. Wow. Him being this low. That is a shocker. Heading into 2021, that's that's a shocker to me. I I didn't even like when I'm I've been going over this list. I didn't even think about Bill Belichick, but now that I see him, it like wow, he is pretty low. Okay, um, and let, let me, let's read the breakdown for this. He said, I'll, I'll admit there's some legacy built in here, as Belichick has lagged behind for the past decade in terms of making correct decisions on fourth downs, with the 2020 Patriots going forward on just 39% of admissible situations. That ranked 24th in football, and the team surrendered 0.5 expected points in the process. That said, last year's team earned just the 21st most wins above replacement in the NFL, but still managed to win seven games in a division where the Bills and Dolphins reached double-digit victories. It remains to be seen if they can win with Cam Newton and Mac Jones moving forward. But if someone can, it's likely Belichick. Okay. So it's based off of what have you done for me lately? Okay. So that makes me uh, understand it a bit better now. Um, still pretty low, but I think they, they, they factor in the current team that they have, uh, the quarterbacks, and um, again, the fourth downs that we read about early on in the video. They take them fourth down seriously, man. Uh, and, and the points that they gave up when they didn't go for it on fourth down. So, yeah. And with uh, Mac Jones, I, I just, my biggest question for the Patriots is, is he going to stick with that number 50? Will they do that? I would love to see it. It'd be ugly, but I would love to see it. Anyway, number seven, uh, Kevin Stefanski. Stefanski from the Cleveland Browns. Now, he, um, wow, he is number seven. Boom. First year on the scene. Uh, number seven. And he came to, he got this team in a pandemic year. Uh, inherited this team, so he was limited on what he could do. He was limited on what he could implement, but he did a phenomenal job given the situation. Phenomenal job. Like, because there was really no offseason. But the fact that the Browns, they started off a little bit slow, but then as the season went along, they picked it up. They started getting better and better, stronger and stronger. Even lost Nick Chubb for a big chunk of the season, but they still kept rolling. Then they got him back. They 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 just they did their thing. They lost in a heartbreaker. Oh, heartbreaker to the Chiefs in that playoff game. Oh, that was so tough. It was four down and all, and they let Tyreek Hill like you. That's I I know like you don't want to leave anybody open. But to to let Tyreek Hill loose and oh man oh that was I'm about to go watch a highlight of that play man um but that that was a painful one oh that oh that was tough um so but they they definitely got something special over there they got something special over there and they what they're building over there is just gonna make the AFC North that much more fun oh yeah well two coaches in the AFC North there's also two coaches in the AFC East um but we we out here man. We are out here. One thing I'm surprised about, I don't see uh 
I don't see uh Tampa Bay coach uh Bruce Arians. I don't see him on here. And they only um looks like they only uh did the top seven. So I guess that's that. So anyway, shout out to PFF. Shout out to John Harbaugh and, and please, John Harbaugh, give them a reason uh this year to to push you even higher. You know what you need to do. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We out. Yeah, this feels like a dream.